Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Let's wait one more minute and then we can get started. All right, I think we can get started. Um, so welcome everyone at the Aerosome JavaScript working group call um, of, it is May 25th. Um, I need to uh, remember you to abide by the high pledge code of conduct and the antitrust policy. Um, is there anyone new here today that would like to introduce themselves or share what they're working on? Cool. I think I'll also recognize all names in the call. So uh, good to have you all here today. Um, if you want to add yourself to the attendees list, feel free to do so. You can uh, share the meeting notes again. Um, so for the agenda today, um, uh, curious if people have specific topics they would um, like to discuss. Uh, we'll get to the status updates in a minute. Um, we have um, Future of Arrays, which is a bit from like the Arrays Working Group call. Maybe we can also shortly discuss it here and see what uh, uh, people uh, uh, from the Arrays JavaScript call think about uh, the ongoing discussions um, in the Arrays Working Group call. Um, Maybe we can reiterate a bit on the presentation Kareem gave last week on the future architecture of Arizona JavaScript, uh, and maybe also how it relates to the future of Arise. Um, I want to quickly reiterate the 040 release, but I think we can also do that maybe in the status updates with uh, um, the shared related to the shared components. Um, and I've added Ditcom V2, I think. Uh, there's probably um, some things to discuss about it. Uh, I know a lot of progress has been made uh, by Artem. Um, and uh, yeah, we hope to get it merged soon. So maybe we can uh, look at what's left, what's good enough to, to get it merged now. There are some changes we want to make to the wallet um, in the API, but I think we can do that after like we have merged all the Conv2 um, stuff. Um, so I also added this one, the wallet API has been there for a while, um, but I mainly wanted Ariel to drive that, but I don't think he's here today. Um, are there any other topics people would like to, to add to the agenda for today? Uh, no, nothing to the agenda, um, but you've probably seen me uh, ping in the Discord a bunch. It's It's been kind of frustrating with the demo and the, I guess the changes to 040 actually using Airy JavaScript framework uh, coming in as a beginner. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I don't know if if I can uh, just vote for maybe if someone can help me focus on that. Uh, that's that's my own. That's my own, not really added to the agenda, but just wanted to note it in the meeting. Yeah. I think maybe we can spend some time with it. I think we can maybe improve some things to make it easier. Um, I agree we're currently in a bit of like a rough situation where we're in between versions and everything. And, and maybe that isn't uh, um, working the nicest. And I was also thinking like, I saw your messages yesterday. And I was thinking like, yeah, we haven't had a lot of like good examples, setups and repos um, that are also very up to date. And I think maybe, um, we should spend more time on like having 
some resources to easily get started and have like pre-set up projects that you can just start from. So you don't have to do like the, 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 yeah, the complex process of setting everything up. I think, uh, yeah. So I think we, we should spend some time with that, uh, um, uh, uh, getting started. Yeah. Uh, cause, cause I had experience with Agapi, right. And, uh, and, and then coming to this, I, I remember area JavaScript framework at one point being, uh, everything was in a row i guess just maybe the changes it's, it's gotten a little rougher um and and i got and bifold jason leach did a bunch of work and bifold now works so uh, that, that's good uh but i just wanted to mention it uh just because <laughs> uh you know the demo is hard and then weird errors and all that stuff yeah yeah no that makes sense so uh yeah i think we can iterate them and uh, see if we can maybe make some uh some quick fixes to make that easier uh, or get some documentation out. Yeah. All right. Any other topics you would like to discuss or want to uh, yeah, have questions about? I think I have a question, Timo. Hello, everyone. Uh, I saw that uh, we have a really good pull, pull request for individual, which is also fixes iOS version compatibility. And I saw it was approved already, and I ju I'm just uh, wondering, uh, do we have any blockers here, and uh, where approximately it will be merged? Yeah, so I think we're talking about these two PRs. Um, no, this is for and... uh, for Android. Yeah, I think was it a... was 186 or something like this. Yeah, I, I did a PR to to have lower iOS version compatibility and to remove yeah, some issues one. from a test flight. Um, oh, this is still open. Oh, yeah, I think we can just merge this. Oh, yeah. Um, and then we just have to create a new release. Should be good. Yeah, maybe we can also merge the the yeah the cross still, images. Oh, that's still that's still failing um yeah okay so uh but yeah maybe we can get this in and otherwise we'll just make a new uh a new release and get this one in afterwards um yeah maybe if we're now on it uh Berend, can you give a short update on the shared components and all the work that you're doing and what's still left of it like of all the different repos and ios android fixes yeah um so Basically, for Node.js, nothing has really changed. Um, still the same state, basically working, uh, but there were some performance issues, which I think are resolved in Node 18. Um, for React Native, uh, we for a long time, we didn't really have uh, support for version 70 and no, 71, I think, and 72 in the future, uh, but the PR that I think Timo just showed that support for React Native 66 up until the latest uh, for Anon Kretz, NVDR, and Aries Oscar. And we also have support for Expo now. Um, there are still some very weird registration issues with Expo, um, but I believe that they are working. Um, I've tested multiple multiple times, and in some apps they they work, and in some apps they they don't work. But I think Timo created the PR for uh, to fix that, where we have the shared uh, packages as a peer dependency. Um, so Expo support is there or is coming, um, and I think yeah, if we, when we release AFJ 040, I think we do like a stable release of Anomcrats uh, in VR and SCAR as well um yeah it's quite a bit of work but uh it's 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 getting there it's getting close yeah uh sorry i was typing uh so maybe i missed some things did you also uh talk about the lower android version oh. support with custom cross images no so uh we uh with there were some weird things with rust and if we want to build for android we basically have to do cross compilation which is always a bit annoying so we use a tool called cross rs which uses like docker to build for other targets so here we can build for android for example but they yeah, they do some weird things and with that we only support android 11 i think 
uh, with API 30, which is quite high, and we want also to support lower versions of Android. So uh, Glacio did quite a bit of work getting those images working with lower versions of Android. And uh, yeah, this is the, the repo that he created. And now um, I tested on Anocrats a couple hours ago, and that works with, uh, I think the lowest I tested was API 24 with Android 7. Um, still have to test it for SCAR and EVDR. Um, but yeah, that is looking quite good. Um, so we have- Which, which Android think, version? I'm sorry. Uh, lowest I tested was Android 7, but I think the cross images specified Android 5 even, but I don't think that React Native supports that. So that would be a bit useless. Um, yeah, so Android 7 at least and iOS 12, I think, or 13. Um, it also depends on which React Native uh, what React Native uh, supports, because I think the binaries go up to iOS 7, which is extremely low. Uh, so yeah, somewhere 12 or 13, um, it depends on React Native. Now I think I covered everything. Yeah, I think <laughs> so. Um, okay, so and here a pull request open for all of them, right? And this one we can do, so hopefully we can like, yeah, we have like a working, uh, uh, like we have everything fixed now, right? That that were issues. It's just we need to get it merged and released. Yeah, we we still have to test um, the SCAR and NVDR after they've been built because they're also. I think there was some issue that Jason ran into on a simulator with x86 64 versus x86. So we also have to look into that. Um, but yeah, that's just a lot of testing and uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay, thank you for that update. That's helpful. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Alexander, does this uh, answer yeah, your yeah. question? Sounds great, guys. Thank you for the for update and for your work. Cool. Okay. Um, other status updates uh, on Bifold. I don't know if the Bifold call was this week. Any uh, updates on the project? So uh, on a Bifold call, guys were talking about uh, goal of making the app more accessible in the next sprint, I believe. Okay, and then like adding um, adding custom like uh, what's called it now, like in the web world uh, area labels and uh, uh, these kind of things. Uh, yeah. So Jason was talking about uh, better support for people with uh, vision problems and so on. Okay, that sounds interesting. Cool. And sorry, additional few words about bifold. So this are is uh, testing bifold and uh, it is from JavaScript uh, in comparison and so we'll provide you test results. So maybe create new issues, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's nice. That's uh, uh, yeah, and and like test. Uh, what what specific features are you testing? Uh, so right now we are testing just uh, issuing credentials, uh, usual flow, and uh, for errors from framework JavaScript. Uh, in addition, uh, credential verification. So and okay. UI part of this for by fault. Appreciate it. Uh, awesome. Okay. Um, on the Eric's call, I can do a quick update. There was uh, like it's now a two week discussion uh, um, already, but about the uh, future of hyperledger arrays and whether it's uh, like there's discussion about the potential move of the of hyperledger arrays and its code bases and 
um, everything to the Open Wallet Foundation um, because that can, um, well, uh, maybe that can provide new opportunities or put uh, uh, high pledge errors in a um, uh, in a better spot related to marketing or well, there's there's a lot of discussions and people have a lot of different points. Maybe we can add the um, the notes here because they're I think quite interesting to read through. Uh, let me see. This one was yesterday. Yeah, so as you can see, a lot of participants, um, um, and there's just a lot of. Um, yeah, points being raised about okay, what do we want um, um, about a potential move? Uh, um, uh, Sam has shared a lot of things of like okay, we need to have continuity, continuity of brand, um, um, well, and a lot of things what we could do to improve from high pleasure areas itself. Um, I think um, one thing that was also discussed, which is for me an interesting topic um, related to a potential move, is like what is the scope of high pledge ARIs? Um, because currently we are adding um, a lot of new features to, to high pledge ARIs that are not specifically related to the ARIs RFCs or ARIs intro profiles. Um, if you also like from the discussion or the presentation Karim gave last week um, on um, what should the future architecture be and is like this come part of the core and is there a room for openly for um, uh, uh, VCI and I think um, an interesting thing for me that that came out of it because my opinion on, on what it was is like it's um, uh, SSI built on top of uh, Ditcom primarily using Hyperledger Indie and that's what it's now. Um, um, not saying that it should be. Um, John mentioned uh, John Jordan that it's also um, quite more. It's mentioned here somewhere. I think. Let me see. Um, Sure, that's oh, yeah. um, a set of frameworks that can work with protocols, credentials, types, crypto, from a wide priority of sources. And if you um, see it like that, I think then um, adding all these things to the framework like Earth Framework JavaScript does make a lot of sense. Um, so, um, yeah, I think we have to see how that evolves. Um, um, I don't know if people here in the call have a specific, like that weren't involved in that discussion, if they have specific um, opinions on that. Like, do you do you have an opinion on, on what happens? Do you feel like uh, it could help or it could not help or uh, anything? Or do you think um, it's fine either way? Or yeah, we'd be curious uh, what, uh, um, I think Arizona JavaScript is a, is, a, is a big project from the Aris project, so I think it's important that we make sure, uh, yeah, we get the best out of this. Well, I'm I'm still processing this <laughs> because I I still don't uh, completely understand why this uh, initiative. Uh, I mean, I mean where, where did it? came from actually right i think this is yeah. something that that other people were were asking i like helen i think was was asking um i think it in, in at least to what is concerned about this uh, uh, this uh, this project the the, 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 the particular the, the area framework javascript it probably will make sense to uh, somehow included into the Open Wallet Foundation, but I'm not sure why they are um, they are proposing to move the whole uh, Aries project there because uh, something that was um, or, or they made clear from the beginning is that Open Wallet Foundation will not. Uh, I mean, we it, it will. It will focus on on code implementation and not on the on, on specification. So, uh, and, and basically, right now, what 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 uh, Aries is is mostly uh, a bunch of RFCs or, or specifications to to achieve some 
goals. So I don't know exactly uh, what's the, 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 the best, the, the best uh, fit for, for, for that. Yeah. Another, think, uh, another another issue I I, I see I, I know the the Open Wallet Foundation is is a very very recent uh, project but uh, or initiative, but when I go to the to their to the to, to GitHub, I see almost nothing. I, I I mean, there is no there are not other projects involved there right now at least. So I don't know why it's it's quite confusing for me. But yeah. of course I have no problem if 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 everybody wants to to go to to open wallet it's it, it's fine for me it's not 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 a problem, even if Arius is mostly my my first name but <laughs> but uh, but I can I can change. Yeah, you can change the name. <laughs> I, I, at least my, my 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 middle name is is Osvaldo, so it, it starts with O. Maybe it's it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think with the standards, um, one of the options out there is that is that is they go to diff. I mean, already a lot of a lot of with with Didcom v two. I mean, all the protocols are already going to go there. Um, so I know there's others, obviously other RFCs, but a, a lot of it already is already going to go under diff. So maybe one option is to look at at moving. The, the Aries RFCs in, into more into into into, into um, the decentralized identity foundation. Um, yeah, I th I think that um, uh, makes sense. I think that could maybe also help in making Aries more of a really focused on okay, this is agent implementations, and uh, I think yeah, I should say with Ditcom being moved to Diff already, um, I think a lot of the current Aries RFCs can be deprecated. Um, because they are now covered by the Didcom spec, for example, and that become that it becomes a much more like a light lightweight uh, intro profile um, um, in itself, where then the code is separated from the specifications. Um, yeah, I think that that would be a um, uh, yeah a potential solution. I I think one thing that. Uh, I, I think someone mentioned it two weeks ago at the Aries call was that I think it was Rye or something um, that like with Hyperledger, we get quite a bit of stuff like our GitHub organization. Um, we get for Adam Kretz, I think also for AFJ, I'm not 100% sure, but we have uh, exclusive runners, which are way faster than like the free runners and get a lot of marketing and uh, the workshops that are hosted by them and promoted by them. Um, I'm not sure if Open Wallet Foundation can do all of those things for us. So I, I do think that it would be better for the identity or <laughs> however you want to call it of, of Aries to, to move there. Um, but yeah, if then we, we can't do anything anymore uh, because we don't have Hyperledger behind it with all their resources and everything. Um, yeah, that might be a bit of an issue, I think. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really know the entire infrastructure of Open Wallet Foundation and uh, if they can provide with everything that we are used to with under Hyperledger. Uh, yeah. By, by the way, I think we can we can maybe maybe start thinking on what's what are the problems of being part of hyperledger is there any is there any drawback something that we we don't like about that uh, the foundation will somehow uh, be deprecated uh, in in the short term i mean is is there any problem to to, to of being part of, of hyperledger for for aries i think it's just that we do not necessarily want to be associated with blockchain. Um, and that is mainly the thing. And that it's still like the big connection with Indy and Anocrats and everything. Well, well, at least where we're going towards, that's not really the case anymore. And I think there are still a lot of misconceptions about Aries. And if we stay with Hyperledger, I don't think that they will go away uh, where we have to do a lot of rebranding and marketing. Uh, 
then I think it would be fine. But I think moving to another organization might make uh, it a little easier to say like, hey, we are just an, uh, a substance and identity framework and not specifically a anocrats in the Ditcom V1 framework. That's, I think, for me, the main thing. So we don't we, we don't want to be related to or associated to a to a blockchain, but we do want to be associated to a wallet. I don't think that we. Uh, <laughs> <I don't, laughs> you see, I, I think <laughs> the naming is not good either. No, in, in my opinion, no, that's <laughs> I, I I I I see your point. Um, I think it's not necessarily that we don't want to be associated with blockchain. I think we want to be associated with more than just blockchain because I don't think that there is necessarily an issue that we use some bits or credential definitions or whatever that are anchored on the blockchain. Um, but we do more than that. And Hyperledger is the blockchain. Uh, I don't know, I forgot the official title, but like a, it's, it's a blockchain thing. Yeah, actually, if we if you see the the, the, the release notes for or, or the, the launch notes for Aries, it clearly states mm -hmm. that uh, it's a blockchain root blockchain root uh, I don't know agent or something like that. So yeah, yeah, maybe that it, it, that's not because the, at the moment the, the the idea of Aries was to to not be. Uh, tied to India specifically, but they still thought that uh, any other blockchain would be always there. So maybe that, that's not the case anymore. Maybe now, right now in, in Aries community, we, we don't even want to be tied to, to, the, to the blockchain technology. Yeah. And I, th I think, I mean, it, it... For me, I mean, it can stay under Hyperledger, but I think the, the effort in rebranding it and making sure that everyone who wants to use it knows that it's not only blockchain or not only Indie is so much effort that it might be easier to move to OWF and yeah, have it easier there with the rebranding because then we're under OWF and no one, I think, has an association with OWF and a blockchain. So that, that might be the easiest route, but... Yeah, I don't know if it's the, the best route because now yeah, Hyperledger they do provide quite a bit of things, um, which are very nice and we use them a lot. So, hmm. yeah, I wanted to add that uh, all of like the, the independent efforts that were uh, like we did that was done technically. So I think having us going to the Open Wallet Foundation will make that more public facing specifically. So we don't tie to, so we're not tied to indie because like we know that like we're like quote unquote independent, like we're not dependent on the indie ledger, but I don't think other people outside would, would know that. And us just writing a blog post somewhere, I don't think it's gonna uh, change the perception that's been around for years. So from like a marketing perspective, I think it's good. However, I think we need to weigh all of the support they can provide because I've been in several of those meetings and uh, yeah, like Ariel said, uh, the majority of the meetings are pretty much just them talking and having other open source group present to them, like uh, they're building libraries. So there was yeah, like several other uh, companies like the website space that presented to them and they're just kind of like wanting to uh, pretty much fork a bunch of SDKs and put them in one place. That's kind of my understanding of what they're trying to achieve. Uh, so I'm not sure the level of support that they can provide and if they talk about having uh, like like the technical structure and whatnot, because like even the repository, there's very little action going on. There was a little bit at the beginning from like an architectural perspective, but it seems to have died off. Okay. So. Um... Just throw in my two cents as somebody who's not, who's been monitoring this stuff for about the last year, but isn't heavily invested in any technology stack, is that the, the circles that I end up intersecting with outside of the 
Aries community um, very much view Aries as not just blockchain and indie, but as a non creds um, and CL signatures. Um, and uh, yeah, so and did come. And so while the work is going on to make um, the technology, the, the stack much more kind of agnostic to what the registry is and what the format is and what the signature set is and, you know, and what the communication protocols are, that is the perception. And that is very difficult to change. Um, and so I think part of the, uh, the benefit of of moving somewhere new, whether, and I, I'm not in a position to say whether I think the moving to the Alcorn Wallet Foundation or not, is a good place or not, but the, the rebranding that needs to happen to get over that perception, if, if in fact that is what the Aries community wants, um, would be beneficial to like start with a somewhat clean slate in terms of the branding so that that perception can be moved away if that's what the community wants. If the community is saying, yeah, we're supporting these other things, but really we are about, you know, first and foremost, and on creds and didcom and, you know, and, and ledger based, then maybe that branding is not where you want to go. So, but that is the perception. And, and although I've tried to preach to some people that, hey, that this is, you know, it's changing and it's supporting these other things. You know, the perception is there. Yeah, thanks for the input. I think that uh, I think that's something we keep hearing more and more. And, and I agree, like changing a perception is uh, is very difficult uh, if you have a brand. Um, yeah, and I think a move to the Open Wallet Foundation. Uh, yeah, could maybe help with that. Um, question is if we're going to do the same thing with like the point Ariel raised with the uh, wallet. Um, but yeah, I think these are really good inputs. Yeah, I think one thing, as much as I hate the fact that it always comes down to the wallet, if you're outside of the core people working on this, the wallet is, is the first thing everyone goes to. It, it is the anchor in most people's mental model of, of digital trust and digital identity. And it's not necessarily right, but it is what you know, marketing wise is what it is. I've also just posted a um, in the chat, reread read the um, quote from this is from Fido Alliance, obviously incredibly technical group who knows their stuff. This is their interpretation of Aries and Indy, some kind of mismatch of different different ideas. So again, marketing, we're, we're, definitely Aries is getting is getting blurred in terms of um, of what it is under because of the history and, and the hyperledger pieces. So let's it's actually a great paper otherwise, but um, that, that quote really struck struck me as being a little misguided. Yeah. Can I add a few words too? Uh, because I believe we can divide this question to two different parts. Uh, first of them, we discussed blockchain part. And so of course we want to make uh, areas from work uh, more agnostic, ledger agnostic. Uh, firstly, because of checked and honestly, a lot of new uh, blockchains that we have and already can use with uh, areas, framework JavaScript, for example. And another question, it's a wallet because uh, we don't want to have uh, indie wallet uh, like a just indie ledger connection. And we think about uh, open wallets for all formats, CL and not only. So I suggest maybe discuss it in uh, two ways. First of them, uh, connection with different blockchains and do we really, uh, is it really required? And another part, it's wallet that we already try to make like video, like uh, Ascar tools uh, to make it not in the, not just in the wallet, but for other systems too. And then I believe we can say that uh, ARES uh, is not connected only with Indy, and we don't need to make a strict uh, dependence on uh, the blockchain part. Yeah, 
I think also makes sense. Like we have uh, for a very long time had in the SDK and I think, um, yeah, all implementations used in the SDK and that doesn't help probably because even then, if you don't want to use the Indie Ledger, you are still using the Indie SDK, which uh, can be confusing. Um, yeah, so I think what comes out of this is that um, maybe there's something in the Open Wallet Foundation, but I think there's also just a lot of misconceptions. So maybe branding or like marketing could help with that. Um, I think probably cleaning up a lot of the old stuff um, within Air Eyes, maybe rebranding the purpose, um, making some videos about or like uh, tutorials about like what is really the scope of Air Eyes. I think maybe those things could already really help. Um, um, but another point could be like, isn't it easier to move? Um, yeah. Anything, anyone that wants to add something to this? I'm, I'm planning on like, there's a um, discussion here um, and there's more meetings. I think that's going to happen. So um, I want to write up a bit of my own uh, perspective, I think in the discussion, I also want to take into these points. Are there any other points that people feel like haven't been raised yet for like why this should be done or not or Okay, cool. Well, thanks for all the input. This is uh, uh, this is really helpful. Um, cool. Let's see. Okay, we have around twenty minutes left. Um, maybe we can very quickly uh, do the zero for zero release because I think that's that's just about a minute. Is um, it has been really way longer than we expected to have this released, and I think basically everything is in place to release it um, if we have those shared component stuff fixed, which I think we're getting really close, a lot of movement here. Um, yeah, that's ongoing. Um, I was curious about the state of the revocation, um, Ariel, and what you think. Um, um, yeah, yeah, I I, 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 I couldn't I couldn't work on, on that in the last weeks, but I'm, I'm just, uh returning to the EFC development so I will I will review I mean I will I will check your your comments on the on the PR and, and probably I will I will address all the feedback during this this weekend I think uh, but I'm I don't know if we should uh, wait until it is merged before releasing the, the zero for zero. I don't know. Maybe we can we can do it in the zero for one if, if that, that's a, yeah. a problem. I agree. I think uh, we shouldn't wait to uh, hold off the release any longer. So I think if we have yeah. these shared components ready, we should make the release and then we can just add it to a zero for one or maybe a zero five zero. Like there's not. I don't think if there's um, it's really a big issue. Also, if we make a zero five zero um very soon um like i don't think people uh <laughs> currently have a problem with too much like um releases rather too few um so uh okay cool um yeah i think then that's that's okay i do think like having um the release be delayed this much have um given us the chance to test it out a bit more because there's been really a lot of changes with all the anocrats changes and, and the generalization like this is a really big architectural change um, and we've been using it um, for like we've updated the few wallets um, to the new version uh, some cloud stuff um, um, so we have had some time to to work with it now which I think that is is great that we can be sure that the uh, the zero for zero release that we release has been like already tested out um, uh, uh, before being released. Okay. Uh, hopefully more updates on this soon. Um, let me see. Um, there's, I think maybe uh, uh, Artem, um, do you have a lot on the DITCOM v2 stuff that you want to discuss or, or what's, uh, what, what, what would you, how would you like to approach that? 
Uh, <clears throat> actually, I just wonder to know what uh, next steps should I do, what changes are needed to get it merged uh, quickly. What, uh, like, uh, I took uh, the base, uh, did conv2 branch as the basis and uh, changed uh, crypto implementation from Sigma to just use areas as car methods as expected. Uh, everything what is needed, uh, it provides. And uh, uh, implementation passes uh, test vectors from div specification, and this is good news. Uh, the only uh, not good point is that uh, we need a uh, did resolver inside of the wallet, and for now the implementation is limited to did key and did peer methods only, but in the best uh, we need to rework it, and uh, for me, uh, it looks like we need to move it uh, to move. We need to move it to core uh, and construct GVA and handle it there, but and expose just uh, crypto operations like ECD, ECDH, one PU key wrapping uh, or yet encryption out of the wallet. Uh, I believe uh, from Gitcom V1 perspective, uh, in this decay also provides uh, unencrypt and our script methods, which are pieces of uh, this uh, JVA version. So we should be able to implement it as well and still support uh, in the wallet, uh, but it's it just more work. And as of now, I just uh, would like to get current implementation merged in main and after after that continue improve it. So uh, appreciate any feedback, <laughs> any comments, any major issues which need to be resolved to get it merged. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. Um, I think I'm fine with um, like, having it in the wallet, because that's also what we do for Ditcom um, V1 now. Um, and as I mentioned, I do think we should uh, not call the Dit Resolver directly in the wallet, but extract it to a higher layer. And I think from my perspective, then we're good to merge it now. Um, and then when we're going to do the wallet API refactoring, um, we, um, um, we can like extract it into a separate uh, JSON web encryption service and and um, yeah remove the pack unpack that's very Ditcom V1 specific from the um, from the wallet and just have the like the the more lower level crypto uh, operations. I think from my side that makes sense and um, yeah would be good to have this merged soon into the main branch because feature branches are uh, yeah not not so nice. Um, okay. Thanks for the update. I left some more comments uh, uh, on the PR, uh, but yeah, most of it looks good. Yeah, I'll work on these comments and get them resolved as soon as I can. Okay, um, then I want to ask Ariel, it has been on like the, the uh, wallet API uh, refactoring. It has been on the agenda for like a few times. We do, like we don't get to it. Could you maybe for next week prepare some things for yeah. this? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I, I will, I will. Discussion on it? Yeah, I will, I will, I'm anxious to review the, the work done, done by, by Artem, which is somehow related because there will be some changes on the on the wallet, um, so I will I will look at it and and, and prepare something about the, the wallet API in, in general for the next week. Okay, cool. Then we'll add a top of agenda next week. Um, yeah, because I think we probably want some time for that, and I think it's uh, yeah with the Ditcom stuff and also what we now notice with. Um, JWT verify credentials and that there's some current limitations in the wallet API that, uh, uh, yeah, don't, don't make sense. Um, so yeah, okay, that would be good. Um, then maybe we can spend the last 10 minutes uh, on the, um, of the meeting on like the point Charles raised on like getting started with AFJ and that it can be um, quite complex. Um, and what we can maybe do in the short term to make this easier 
Um, um, I think one point I have noticed is that uh, uh, um, uh, difficult to keep up with uh, versions um, uh, alpha uh, versus stable, um, what to use and install instructions are uh, sometimes uh, incorrect if in alpha stages. So I think that's um, one thing I've noticed. Are there um, specific things people uh, see and like how what's currently difficult and maybe things we could easily solve? I know Charles, you you raised this, so well, even even just keeping the demo working would be a starting point. Um, and the demo kind of works now until they give some. I mean, it's kind of you guys. It's kind of like giving errors and then fix it, and then errors and then a different error. Uh, but, but even just keeping the demo, you know, the Alice Faber walkthrough. Uh, working would be would be a huge help. Um, yeah, I think uh, uh, one suggestion um, I had on that, and that is like um, you like the errors from JavaScript repo uh, supports um, errors Oscar in the SDK, and there's like quite a lot of dependencies needed to get it to work. Um, I think one of my thoughts to make it a lot easier to have it working is by extracting it into a separate repo because then we can keep the setup minimal, which is if you get started is nice because currently you need to have the whole repo set up, um, um, which brings dependencies for Indie, checked, um, um, and, and, and uh, Oscar in the SDK. Like, um, do you think that could help with making it easier? That, that, that would, uh, or, or even what Akapai does, just putting it in a Docker container would be a, a starting point, right? Um, yeah. Uh, just because just just that's, that's, that's hard, uh, you know, as a beginner is coming to something and, and not understanding if it was like my mistake or if it was the demos, uh, you know, bug, right? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good, good suggestion, yes. Uh, and then, and then, yeah, mostly because uh, I, I tried to. I mean, the, the two main things I tried were I tried running for the demo, and and you know we we iterated a couple times on a couple of bugs in, in the demo, and then in, in the setup instructions, um, definitely the alpha, and even but even the old release, uh, the stable version uh, didn't didn't build for weird reasons that I think were due to like Ascar. Um, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so yeah, those are those are the two main ones. Uh, and yeah. also, in the documentation, it's not clear what the what the release cycle is like, especially now that things moved off to Ascar and all that other stuff. Um, something something about Ascar doesn't, you know, I couldn't even find a main. I think I, it was one of the threads we had on that Discord, but one of the Ascars didn't even have like a entry point that that Aries JavaScript framework assumed it would have. And, and I'm not a good JavaScript developer, so maybe it was my mistake, but it's just a confusing error that I think was just due to versions changing or something. Yeah, yeah, that's basically then an issue of we release on every commit. So then we have like in the main branch, then we start working on the SCAR module, but it's not ready for usage yet. So um, um, I think that's confusing. And one thing um, that's a bit, Annoying about NPM is, um, um, and I've run into it myself a lot of times as well, is if you um, go to, for example, Air Framework Oscar, we've never had a stable release for it because we started working on this um, um, in the 040 um, work grant. And if you look at the latest version, um, if the if you have a first version that is the alpha release, then it will be tagged as the latest. So there's like, if you just install at Aeros Framework Oscar, you will get like a, a very old alpha version, which doesn't work. Uh, that's, I think the, the version you probably also installed because then you have like no entry point and um, that's yeah. an issue. Um, oh. uh, yeah, we have to fix. So I'm not sure what the best approach is to because you can't release something under only the alpha. You have to, you need to, when you first release it, even if it's an alpha, it will be published under the latest tag. Um, I think one thing we can do in that is better documentation. 
um, in like install instructions and, and good um, adding text to install scripts. So you also always install the correct version based on the documentation. I think that that helps. Uh, uh, yeah. So I made a PR yesterday to um, the docs, which I hope will help a bit with this and maybe we can uh, make more improvement, but is um, if you go to the getting started guide and now, for example, Eris Oscar, I have now added like in the next branch added like at alpha uh, installs um, to all the install commands. And if we go to um, 030 uh, installation uh, for uh, the setup, I now added like 030. So if you look at all documentation, you run the install script, you would never get like the version that is not um, relevant for the like what you're currently setting up so you don't get uh, hopefully as much version errors uh, this is of course just one small thing but um, yeah hope we can get more of these um, any other things people mentioned I think you also had issues a lot with like the react native setup right a well, couple more words regarding the demos. Uh, there is definitely lack of the documentations for plugin plugins uh, because uh, like there are powerful feature JSON LD credentials and BBS signatures, but they are not covered at all. And you can cannot uh, run any demo and see them in action. Uh, the current uh, Faber Edis demo just uh, reflects uh, and creates uh, regular flow with issues and presentations. There are plugins for checked, uh, for question answer, but I do not have an idea how to test them. And the uh, same for OpenID Connect. I quite trendy nowadays, and it <laughs> may be a good tag in search, and uh, we get AFJS implementation, but I cannot see it, cannot test it apart just from seeing unit tests. Yeah. Um, I think uh, uh, this makes sense. I think it's not probably even for plugins. It's just like lack of documentation and uh, 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 the demo, not, things not being included in the demo. Um, that makes sense as well. Um, uh, yeah, I think we can, uh, we should add tutorials for all these kind of things. Like we have, I think the, we have for the, the next branch, we have like documentation for all the, the setup. So there's like on how you um, set up uh, checked and then there's the tutorials of like, um, uh, for example, in the check did module, how you can create it, but it's very like, it's still just some pieces are there and a lot of things aren't there yet. So um, uh, yeah, we really need to extend over this. We can create a connection we have to check, we have uh, Anocred's uh, uh, schema and credential definition, credential issues mediation, but we don't even have a tutorial on proof request, uh, uh, for example, which is a very complex thing to implement if you don't know how uh, uh, Anocred's proofs work. Um, and even if you know how it works, it's still like very complex uh, if you have to implement that. So I think, yeah, uh, better documentation, um, I, if I can add one is I think probably, um, example, uh, repos set up with the, uh, latest version and having simple flows, uh, implemented, um, which is just like, if we can have an example, um, uh, react native project that has just everything set up minimally, but like not more. So it also like doesn't become too complex and also have simple flows implemented. Um, I think that can help in getting started and looking at a reference implementation for how certain things are done. Um, and I think maybe we should just create like two repos, one, um, an example airstream with JavaScript server and one uh, example airstream with JavaScript um, mobile agent. And this will have a different purpose from um, like the Bifold project, which I think is a really good reference project for um, React Native, um, but has like is, is more of like a fully implemented uh, wallet. Um, and I think some simple demos I think can help. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. In, in light of the earlier conversation about what the Aries project is, uh, even just an example of not using any indie SDK components, if that's possible, like like you guys mentioned in the Discord, uh, that would be super cool just to have. Here's Aries running with the peer and and uh, no no indie SDK stuff at all. Yeah, I um, I'm always really a fan of like the uh, the Next.js examples is they have like um, a lot of examples and they're all like um, setting up a next project with this specific library or doing it in this way or in this way. And they have like, or if you want to do it with this, uh, this content management system on this one and um, like whatever your use case is, they have an example for it. So you can always look at um, like, um, how it works and it's also for them. So they can like always have like, all right, how does it work if you actually use this uh, for certain use case? So maybe we can create like an examples repo where we can create simple example flows. Um, I think that that could already really help. Um, uh, let's see, where's the note? Okay, um, we don't have any time now anymore, uh, but then I, um, I'll i probably bring it up next week again. Um, but um, yeah, uh, some help from people, if we can also maybe uh, pick up some of these things that would be really appreciated. Uh, um, and maybe we can do some planning on it next week to see, right, uh, which can some people maybe dockerize the, the demo uh, and these kind of things. Uh, but yeah, okay, end of, uh, end of meeting. Uh, thank you all. Um, uh, good discussion and uh, I'll see you all next week. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.